Jack and here to bring you another Boom Beach video. In today's video, guys, I wanted to go over using Warriors after all of these hero updates. And this is based on the Tribal Mega Crab that's going to be coming out uh, this Friday. So make sure you set your schedule, get your, uh, get your sandwiches ready, because we have a full weekend of crab plant here, guys. So if you didn't see the uh, announcement yesterday that we talked about, I'm not going to go over everything again, but uh, they're saying Super Warriors are coming back, Warriors are gathering, It's the, the theme is the Tribal Mega Crab, which is going to be super interesting, because we're also going to have all of these tribes for it, right? Because they reset in seven days, so we're definitely going to have these tribes. Um, but the one thing I wasn't sure about, using Warriors, if it's a buff to normal Warriors as well, maybe it's just, maybe maybe the whole thing is saying that we're just getting the Super Warrior as a permanent Gunboat Energy um, ability, um... For the duration of the crab, maybe that's all it is. But if we're also getting um, a, a regular warrior buff, which it kind of hinted at, um, the Gumbo Energy Gain Tribe is going to be useless. And this tribe is probably the strongest tribe that's ever come to Boom Beach in terms of offensive attacking. Um, I think it's a lot stronger than just your typical than just your typical uh, GB boost because you're able to just farm up so much more stuff. So what I wanted to go over today was going to be some ways to incorporate this into your Mega Crab, uh, into your Mega Crab attack. So, what we want to do here is, basically the idea is going to be, you want to send your Warriors into an area, right? And you want them to take out as many defenses as they can around the core. So we'll see if we can, uh, if we can show you guys how we would go about doing that here. So, we'll go like this. And we want to make sure that we don't leave Kavan out in the open uh, too, too long. Because he's going to get sniped by some other stuff. But instead of just locking onto the HQ, here's how we're going to try to get this uh, Gunboat Energy Tribe to work a little bit better for us. Now, keep in mind, obviously, this base that we're on right now, we would be much better off to flare straight onto the HQ. But say it has like a 3 million health shield or something like that. If we're able to clear some of this stuff out... Uh, just like this and like that if we're able to clear some of this stuff out not only does it make the core rush a little bit easier But it also gets us more GB so now we can go ahead we can shock over here we can shock over here We can get some med kits going down like that and That wasn't a very good um, Demonstration, but that's the idea. That's the idea is to uh, is to kind of clear out an, a section behind the core um, then you don't have to keep constantly shocking machine guns. Your warriors are going to be able to sit there longer, assuming they have a damage increase. Um, that could be very, very beneficial. So we'll try to do that again. Maybe a little bit better this time. Um, let's try it on an NPC base, on a base builder one. Um, so yeah, so we'll try something like this here. Now, in terms of the best hero, Kavan's going to be okay. Bullet's probably going to be the best. Um, Everspark... Pretty well useless. And Brick is going to be fantastic if you're able to use her correctly. So we'll go like this. We'll flare right up onto this uh, economy building here. And this time, I'm looking at this. What do I want to take out? I want to take down those two uh, machine guns and that shock launcher. Before I flare onto the HQ, right? So uh, we'll go like this. We can throw some critters out too to just help distract a little bit. Now I still want to make sure that I'm shocking this, uh, this shock launcher because that's going to be an issue. So we can go like that, we can get the ice shield going up, we can take down 1, 2, 3, and 4, then we can flare onto the HQ, and we can get another ice shield going, just to protect them, and and then we don't have to, we, we didn't have to waste all of our GBE shocking stuff, only for them to expire, and then the warriors just go down. So, I think something like that is going to be an interesting way to go about, now this is obviously, isn't, I'm not saying this is the best strategy to use, I'm not saying this is going to be what we're doing for every mega crab hit but i think on certain instances it will be helpful for sure so next up let's try to use an attack with brick and more or less doing the same sort of strategy so you see this time since i don't have kavan on the walks i want to make them a little bit friendlier i want to uh so we'll go like this Go like that and like that. Okay, so not a not a beautiful start, but it'll work. Uh, and then we're gonna flare. Whenever you take brick, you want to make sure 
your walks are shorter. Like this is probably, this is probably too long of a walk to use, but we're gonna try it. So you see right here, I have to flare up directly onto um, pretty well directly onto the HQ. And see how much gunmetal energy that uh, that took for us to do that. But we're also gonna have battle orders once the smoke pops off. So it's gonna cost more GB. So y you have to be uh, aware of that. So you see, they're gonna do tons of damage here, but then they're gonna start getting hit by shock launchers and things like that. But um, if you're able to do this in kind of a safer area, then that's gonna be a fantastic way to um, to get some extra damage off with your warriors. I imagine if they do have a damage boost, then they're gonna be doing. Uh, incredible amounts of damage onto the HQ once uh, if you're able to get them safely there and uh, have battle orders in tow. So that's going to be another option. Um, what we could also do now, the other thing about warriors is they're basically useless with other troops. You can't, like, there's not really a warrior anything else strategy other than just warriors because you throw them out and they're way too fast with everybody. But if we can. Um, if we can compare them to the speed that heavies have right now, I believe they're still faster, but we'll see if, um, I got this to work earlier, so we'll see how this is going to go. Because if we're able to keep the heavies out in front of the warriors, and we can just kind of take down specific buildings, then, uh, yeah, so the, the problem is there. That the warriors do too much damage uh, so they just rip through the buildings and then they just keep on running and bullet is uh, he's sitting way in behind not doing very much uh, not doing very much damage to anybody but we were able to get a ton of GB doing this uh, okay so we'll go with shock here and we'll go like that yeah, so I, I wouldn't recommend doing this specifically, but it was uh, it was definitely an interesting thought. So I think they actually move at the same speed, but since the warriors are going to rip through these buildings much, much faster than the heavies, then it basically becomes pointless to use them because they're just going to smash through stuff, run in front of the heavies, and then die. So, um, yeah, you can't really use warriors with anything else. Which kind of, uh, which kind of is annoying, but, because we're just trying to figure out the best way to use these guys here. So if we try doing that again, but this time let's just flare right onto the HQ with all of the heavies intact. This could be a little bit more, a little bit more beneficial. So let's get a bullet going up first. He's going to be the slowest. Then we can go up here like that. Let them all hit that flag. And then we can get them all collected up onto this um, onto this resource building right here. So, you see, the heavies are actually able to keep up with the warriors for the most part. Their movement speed is basically it's basically the same. Bullets a little bit slower, but it's going to come down to how they group up on the HQ. So look at this: we have the heavies in behind the warriors. So they're, they should be taking all the splash damage from behind. So we can shock the stuff on the side. That hot pot's going to get taunted by bullet. And look at this. These warriors are basically invincible on this side here. But to do this, you're also going to be giving up some pretty hefty damage. Because um, you're missing out on two full bolts of warriors. But the idea is that they, they stay up longer, right? That's what, we're trying to, that's what we're trying to get at here. So if you're able to do something like that and keep heavies and bullet behind the, the warriors and... They're able to get more damage off rather than just shocking um, a single defense. Then that's kind of what we're looking at. So we ran out of bases, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for the uh, for the video today. Um, make sure to let me know down below in the comments what you think is going to be the best strategy for using the Super Warriors or for using um, just for using Warriors in general. It's typically not something you use in the Mega Crab, but excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, so yeah, guys, that's going to wrap up the video today. Make sure to let me know what you think of all that down below in the comments and. Um, and yeah, that is going to wrap up the video today. Make sure you leave a like, if you found it interesting, entertaining, or informative. And we'll see you next one, guys. Chicken out. Brr, 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 brr.